Good afternoon. You are currently in an industry that Canadians find to be extremely important, coffee. We believe with your focus on social responsibility, you have an enormous opportunity to be successful in the Canadian market. Now, we'd like for you to envision your future of being financially stable, of being sustainable, and being able to differentiate yourselves from the competitors. My name is Rachel, and I'm here today with my colleagues, Rob, Emma, and Amanda. And we, as a Sprout School of Business, would like to recommend to you a strategy that will make that vision your reality. Thank you, Rachel. So now that my colleague has addressed the vision and the future we have for your company, it's critical in assessing the challenge that you're facing right now. So through a detailed analysis that we will move into, we have determined that how can your company, Cafe Zaragua, differentiate itself in the competitive industry, uh, the competitive Canadian coffee industry. So before we move forward in the alternatives, we have to take into consideration the strategic priorities that have been laid out to us from the information given that we need to take into consideration in any strategy we do recommend for you. So the first one is being socially responsible. That is something you hold uh, very close to your heart. That is something in your business model. You're not only caring about profit, but you're caring about the environment and the society as a whole. That's something that runs very deep in your strategy. Another one is quality. You pride yourself on having a gourmet product. Um, that is something that is unique to your company and that has to remain the same. The brand image that you portray, of course, that goes along with the social responsibility. You have an image to uphold. That is why you're getting consumers and that's how you're going to retain them. Uh, another one, of course, being gathering the ne necessary funding. You have brought it to our attention, the type of funding you want to use moving forward and we need to make sure that there's going to be enough capital to uh, move forward with any strategy. So, looking at the industry in Canada in general, three main points jump to our attention. The first being high competition. Canada, the Canadian <coughs> industry is laced with large firms, small companies, companies that follow a similar model, and companies that work on an international level. You really need to navigate that competition in order to be successful in the Canadian market. The second thing we wanted to identify is that there's always a threat of new entrants in this market. As your firm can attest to being a new firm in the market, there's always new fad shops popping up throughout the country, and differentiating yourself is key to succeeding, again, against all this competition. And lastly, there's always the, going to be a threat of high substitutes. As caf caffeine tastes are currently very high in, in Canada, as a high proportion of Canadians drink coffee, but that's always subject to, ch to change. Sometimes tea and other uh, beverages can end up being a substitute for these products, and they're always a threat to the potential market share you might be able to gain. The main takeaway from this analysis is that you need to differentiate your products from your competitors and your substitutes in order to succeed in the Canadian industry. Let's take a look at Cafe Zaragoa at the moment. So as my colleague Emma did mention, you do have this unique gourmet product. This allowed you to exceed and grow exponentially in your online sales. So when, how can you leverage your core competencies in in-house with that unique product to create a brick and mortar store that will be successful and still meet your socially sustainable goals. Now we've identified that some of your key weaknesses are that you do have that limited storefront experience. Now coffee is more than just the beverage, it's the experience as well. As my colleague um, Rachel mentioned, this is a very unique trend in, in, in Canada, it's very complex in the culture. You do have a limited product portfolio given that you rely solely on one Arabica variety. So this might pose risk when you're going head to head with competitors. And you do rely uh, heavily on others for your uh, value added goods such as baked goods and the like. So the key takeaway here is you need to leverage your core competencies in in-house brewing as well as your unique product to ensure that you have that differentiating factor. So the customer profile we took a, an, a look at who's your customer. Who are you trying to appeal to with this storefront? You're looking at the young affluent market, specifically in Calgary or Alberta. These are the socially uh, aware customers. They're knowledgeable. They do the market research. They know the value of a gourmet product. Canada is home to an aging population, and we do know that coffee is a beverage that is not strict <coughs> to age. So you do have an opportunity to appeal to both these groups. And the key takeaway that we want to highlight with your customer profile is you have two distinct customer tastes. 
the younger customers who are more affluent will be looking for the specialty drinks, while the older customers will be looking for that service that you offer. So right now, we'll, we can take a look at where Zeragua is positioned. With your online storefront, we know that customers will come to you because either brand affiliation or the social impact that you have. Some of the competitors, as Rob mentioned, it is a consolidated market. Some of the competitors you face in Canada are the likes of Starbucks, Bridgehead, and GMC. <coughs> so with your current model, you're just uh, competing based on your brand affiliation, that gourmet coffee and as well as the social impact, but your customers do not have full engagement. With our strategy, we want to position Zaragua to where um, we currently, we're currently seated in the green box. Okay, so now moving on to strategic alternatives and what we have come up with moving forward in the strategy. So you do have a couple op options to going back to the crux, the challenge that you're facing with differentiating yourselves. So that can be through three alternatives of either licensing opening, and opening a store as well, uh, having a store on wheels alongside the opening of your store in Calgary, and focusing on online sales. So moving into the first one, so this is the licensing and opening store. So you already have made the strategy to invest in that capital for your first brick and mortar store within Calgary. And this would be still having that uh, store open, but you would be focusing on licensing. So you would have your main brick and mortar store, but you would be putting your efforts into licensing with other like-minded cafes. You did express that there are a lot of cafes in the area you are opening in, and you would want ones that have the same values as you in terms of social responsibility, that they would be able to sell this free trade coffee uh, with their products. So of course, uh, positive to this is uh, creating synergies with you. So you're leveraging your core competencies. You're good at brewing your coffee. You're good at taking it um, from Haiti and bringing it over. So this would be allowing you to use some of the marketing initiatives of these other stores and actually be able, being able to tap into an already strong consumer base that these cafes do have. Of course, on the downside, uh, there is a potential for degrading of brand image. So of course, you want to have total control of your brand image, again, as we stated, is a strategic priority. So you have to be very careful that um, these cafes are going to have the same values and the same uh, strategies as you, as well as there is a risk of uh, limited service differentiation. So some stores will be, of course, selling other products, having other product lines, and you will be strictly uh, staying strictly only to coffee. So this does limit you if you did want to go um, forward with any product differentiation in the future. Thank you, Emma. A second alternative is to, for you to open a store on wheels. Now this is very interesting because it will really expand the reach that you can have for customers to know who you are, that you're new in the market, that there are opportunities here. So the way it works is having a truck that is converted to serve coffee. So you're going to be able to be driving around to main busy areas, not having to have the store open at that time and serve the coffee. People can taste their coffee and see how wonderful it is and become a loyal customer. After four months of doing this, you will begin by opening your store. So at this point, people will know who you are, know how fantastic your coffee is, and the social responsibility that you stand for. So it is a very exciting alternative. However, we do have to consider that it might be a little bit pricey to get um, the truck as well as the administration available for this truck, also in order to park in prime locations. The third alternative is we suggest you stick to your online business model. But this time you're looking to reach those customers through grocery stores. So Canada is home to various department grocery and mega stores. We suggest that you uh, reach your, you begin to sell your coffee through those channels. Now, the advantage of this is, is that it's a lower cost option, so it's easy to implement. You're looking to have that uh, reach immediately. However, on the down, downside, there's that limited service, uh, service <coughs> differentiation. You do not have the uh, ability to leverage your expertise in in-house production. So it's difficult to partner as, and as well it's less reach because you're not offering that service. Okay, so now that we've explained the three options, how are we going to pick one moving forward? So we have some key decision criteria that we have broken down for you. Uh, being sustainable, is the strategy going to be sustainable? Is there going to be an ease of implementation? Is it going to be financially feasible? 
and is there going to be a big reach? So in terms of sustainability, uh, are there going to be profits to fund social and environmental programs in Haiti? In terms of ease of implementation, within the first year, are you going to be able to add a second channel? Of course, you have online right now, and we will be referring to the opening of a store. Financially feasible, of course, a low initial investment is always a great thing. And the reach, is it, are you going to have access uh, in whatever strategy we make for you? Are you going to have access to the heavy traffic of the target consumers that we discuss? Um, so moving forward in our decision, we have weighted them. Third being it fits the strategy the best, and first it is the weakest. So if you look, we have had a tie between the licensing along with opening stores and the store on wheels. So after some analysis, we did decide that by putting these two strategies together, it creates a long-term sustainable strategy for you. So initially having in short term, you're raising awareness, you're using the uh, store on wheels for um, getting the no out about your company and then the long term being able to create sustainability by getting um, raising that money by having the other channel of licensing through like-minded companies so moving along getting into our implementation we will go through this in detail which we will cover marketing uh, finance human resources and logistics and operations Thank you, Emma. Marketing is extremely important here because you are a new business in the Canadian market. And the consumption of coffee is very habitual. People are used to going to the places they always go to. It's a habit. They go to Tim Hortons all the time because it's always there. So what you want to do is make yourselves well known. So you really want to take advantage of social media, being able to tweet what's new, the social responsibility, which is very important in the Canadian culture. So it will speak very well to the population. Also to be having Facebook pages, really stressing the message that you have here and the superior quality. We have to know that in Canada, there is low uncertainty avoidance. So people are willing to try new things. They are willing to go the extra mile to try something new that they haven't tried before. We're also going to want to have this truck going around and showing everybody how fantastic your coffee really is. And having very small free samples, of course, we have to consider the cost. So people can taste um, how wonderful it is when they get to the store. So again, very important to be um, considering. Also, we want to put an emphasis on where you come from, why you do what you do, how you're helping deforestation, because this will very much speak to the Canadian people. Okay. So for your logistics and operations, a key takeaway we want here is that you're emphasizing efficiency. So when it comes to those trucks that we're talking about, the delivery trucks of food and wheels, we suggest that you lease them. So immediately from the get-go, you want to get into leasing affordable truck options. You then want to look immediately into retail locations in the prime locations in, in Calgary. And the next thing you will do is to train those in-house partners or the licensees in roasting your coffee. So this will come eventually in the long-term plan, but you want to keep these considerations in mind for your logistical side. And when it comes to operations, we suggest that you do go into renting out the food trucks once you have least the best possible options. Then you do want to rent that space on long-term contracts. You want to find out as many, as I said before, one of the weaknesses that you lie on one Arabica variety. So you do want to look at other options in Haiti. Are there other options to provide these customers with variety? So the key takeaway here is that you want to start off locating your licenses right away. For HR, the key takeaway is that you want to communicate and engage your employees. If you're going for social responsibility, if you want to have an impact, it's very necessary to communicate and to engage your employees. So, and this involves all your stakeholders. So with the food trucks, you will not only tweet your location, but you will tweet how many trees you have planted in Haiti. What impact has it made? What social programs do you have in Haiti? And encourage your employees to take part in initiatives such as um, social tourism, where they get the, uh, the opportunity to go to Haiti and plant these trees as well. This is a common trend in Canada, and we believe it will be to your benefit. Thank you, Amanda. But no strategy would be complete without an analysis of cost and profit projections. So your firm was very, very hesitant to stick to the 100 to 200 to 300 kind of sales projection per day estimate because you wanted some convincing on whether or not this was attainable. 
A simple analysis of your cost structure as well as your pricing scheme, which again, which will have, which we have a heavy detailed analysis in the appendixes, and you can you can ask in question period if you'd like to see that. Uh, shows that even if you sell 150 cups of coffee per day, you've been making $2,952 per day. That's a significant amount of uh, profit, but like, but it doesn't really say much. And is that actually attainable? What you really need to make is your break-even value. So based on all of the fixed initial costs you set up, along with all the variable costs that are being implemented, you need to sell 30.3 cups of coffee per day in this Calgary market. What this means is that this number is very attainable. It is below your what you consider to be potentially an over-optimistic <coughs> reach, and at the same time, gives you lots of room to gain extra customers and put yourself in a position to capture additional profit that falls below the zero break-even line in the middle of the sensitivity analysis. Now, in order to finance this, you are concerned about using a bank loan. Our recommendation is because you can prove that you have this type of levels, uh, uh, strong kind of demand for your product, is to request a bank loan from a local Canadian bank, such as Scotia Bank or RBC. And in order to, to ensure this bank, ensure this loan and help kind of give the bank some security and not make your parents guarantee you, you can commit to an interest coverage ratio debenture. Based on what your current projections are, running at that $150 assumed uh, sales projection per day at a 360 day to account for holidays projection, your current interest coverage ratio is 26.1. Our recommendation is to input an ICR collar of 15, where if your interest coverage ratio falls below the 15, you'd give the bank the option to call their loan. This gives the bank the option, the security necessary to trust your investment, and at the same time, the projections show that you should you should never really end up in a position where that uh, ratio should come into question. Um, so, in, in really, you need to in order to really understand what we're talking about with this implementation, you really need to look at our timeline in order to kind of see where everything's going to fit. So looking at Monday on the, on the left side of the screen here, you're looking at in operations is when you're starting to lease these trucks and get that truck campaign and your store design complete. You're pushing out into the market and you're really trying to entice people into what you can offer them and what, what your product tastes like and what your product uh, differentiates itself on. At the same time, this is when you're doing your communicating and you're hiring and training your employees to work at your stores uh, for the coming years. At this, and lastly, uh, this is the same period where you'll be applying for your bank loan from one of the Canadian banks that I brought up earlier. In between quarter one and quarter three is when you're starting to really establish those supply contracts that Amanda really wanted to point out, so that you don't end up with a position where if something was to happen in your supplier's realm, you wouldn't you'd end up with low supply. Again, at quarter two, we're, pre we're preparing for you to launch your store in the Calgary downtown core. And at your year plus, you can start doing some of your long-term uh, implementation and marketing strategies. You can start to engage your customers. You can potentially look into social tourism as an option to attract customers. And you can locate licensee partners <coughs> where you can continue to see those profits that we talked about through our strategy. So we have identified some risks like this risk inherent in any business strategy. The three risks we identify is finding lack of business uh, businesses to license with, and this is a low level risk which, indi which is indicated in green. A medium level risk is cannibalization. As Rob mentioned, Canada is uh, famous or is opposed to many coffee companies, so you, you do have a risk of cannibalization. And the third risk, of course, is that shortage of the rare Arabica variety that you use. The mitigation strategy we suggest for this is that in terms of finding that partner, that's why we suggest you begin right away on Monday. There are lots of um, companies in your, in your target market, such as specialty call, uh, shops like Crave Cupcakes, that you can easily partner with to create synergies and, um, and make sure that this business is a, is a success. You want to begin your product uh, expansion immediately in case you are facing product uh, cannibalization. You do want to expand to other products. And for the last risk, we do stress that you look into other varieties of uh, coffee within Haiti or neighboring Caribbean countries. Thank you. So the financial outcome for this project is that we assume that the, we're going to forecast that the licensing agreement will help increase operating profits by 5% per year for the next five years. This in conjunction with a marketing expense increase of 1% per year for five years will end up with a 730,000 net income by 2017, which you can leverage into pushing out into more markets and setting up more and more retail outlets. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time. On behalf of my colleagues, I'd like to welcome any questions you might have.
you very much. Um, we'll take our questions in turn. May I start with you, Nick? Yep. Um, good presentation, thank you. Uh, I'm a little concerned um, that our premium brand product um, may be marketed from the back of the truck. And I, I just wonder if you've appreciated fully what we view we have in terms of a product here and, and how that meshes with buying a cup of joe from a you know a stand on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate a little bit for me? So the idea of having the truck is that it is completely transformed to be um to have the experience. So it's gonna be a nice truck. Um but the idea here is to really show how important you are in terms of being able to tell the story. So when you are giving the coffee, you are able to say where they come from um, and the initiatives that are taking place. So it's not gonna be um, just going place to place without making relationships. The idea here is to use the trucks to make relationships to be sustainable in the future. If I may add on to that quickly, um, there also is a growing trend for gourmet food trucks. So um, especially in North America. So by having uh, these coffees out of a cup, it's not necessarily viewed as something maybe dirty or not very classy. It is a growing trend that people do appreciate. They have these gourmet food trucks that go out in the um, like down, downtown Toronto and downtown Ottawa um, and downtown Calgary, pardon me, where they have... Um, yeah, we got the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of, kind of, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about the competitive nature. You mentioned um, how fierce that was in, in cannibalization. Um, what are you going to do and how are you going to suggest that we adjust this business operation strategy if Starbucks start a price war or a second cup, which you didn't mention, um, uh, agree with your differentiation factor and take it? How will you change business operation strategy? Um, you, you fulfill a very different segment, not a very different segment, but there is very key differences between the operating model of Second Cup, Starbucks, and what you offer. You offer something that they don't. They offer perceived quality and perceived free trade and perceived social responsibility. What your firm can offer is true quality, which has been proven through your, uh, your deep work with the Haitian uh, farmers and making sure that that uh, market is very secure and you have tested it and you know that people enjoy your coffee. And at the same time, it is responsible. You have the, the backing and the regulations showing that it is free trade where some of these competitors don't. Obviously, the, a price war can be different because they are going to, because you do serve a lot of the same clients, but you are serving a different customer. As our customer profile indicated, you're looking at a very, very attuned customer to kind of social trends of the world. Somebody who's very, very aware of what's going on and what these large chains may or may not do to some of their supply chain supply chain components or some of the employees who work for the people who they uh, get their coffee beans from. So perception is reality for our customer base. Um, and my question was, how would you adjust your operating model, not the avoidance of competition? Have you mentioned an appendix to do with the finances? Sorry? So how many trucks are going to go out? Uh, currently, what we have uh, estimated for your expenses for the trucks is we have it's currently is it your marketing expense? Uh, there's actually a small mistake here. It should be it should say ten thousand dollars instead of one thousand dollars. That's simply your initial investment in the first year. What it doesn't cover here is that you obviously need to make those lease payments, which has been factored into the lease expense up at the top in the four in the fourth row from the top, okay, which is how many set at seventy six five nine five. How many? We're looking at trucks? four lease trucks in the first four year. Trucks. For the, for the city. Okay. Um, staffing, have you put in enough for that? Staffing? You're, um, yes. Uh, if you look at your, so the second row at the top is based on wages, mm -hmm. which is was your estimated wages at two employees per, per, per store, as well as one employee per truck, so that would give you six total employees, as well as your manager expense. In 2012 and 2013, we forecasted that you'd be able to work alongside of your part-time manager, but then by the 2014, your business would expand it to a point where a full-time manager yeah, would yeah, be necessary. Yeah, I understand that. And then um, your break-even example was, am I right, 30 cups a day? It was just over 30 cups a day. How often do the trucks go out? Um, the trucks, in the first, the first operating period, when before the store opens, they should be operating Monday to Friday at the Already same five days. at the same hour at the same hourly rate. And as, that's in the wages, is it? Yes, because the wages are the wages that was estimated as. 
as your employees, multiplied by the total amount of hours they would work per day, multiplied by, again, to, by, to a week, to 360 days to factor in holidays in Canada. Okay. Thank you. Um, I was very pleased to see that you identified our reliance on uh, baked products um, from other companies, but a bit concerned that you were also suggesting that we go enter into a partnership with a cake shop, um, and how would we maintain our brand image in that area? Would they supersede us? So what we're suggesting is that you offer a compliment. So like a cake shop is offering these cupcakes, but they do not offer the premium gourmet co coffee quality that you do. By partnering with them, you no longer have to go out and pay extra to provide these specialty goods, but instead you're partnering with someone that can provide these goods to match and complement your gourmet coffee. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you've obviously understood our brief very well. Thank you for that. I, I was interested, Part of our brief very much was to create a high-end experience for the customer, not just through the product, mm -hmm. but through the staff. We're going to pay, pay higher wages, we're going to have better staff than other people. Mm -hmm. Yet your model is very predicated on licensing, mm -hmm. and that worries me in terms of losing control over that mm -hmm. particular aspect of our business. Can you tell me how we're going to mitigate those risks? So what we propose initially through the food trucks is to get out that reach. And as Rachel mentioned in the marketing, we're looking to have an atmospheric, as she mentioned, the trucks will have that atmosphere. They'll offer the story of the Haitian culture. Sorry, now, I just stop you there. I, I wasn't so concerned with yeah. the trucks uh, as with the licensing. Sensing the licensing, yes. So we do suggest the licensing to boost your growth. Given that you are getting a loan, we suggest that in order to refinance that loan and grow and expand further within Canada or Alberta, you do get that extra revenue through licenses, so you're just giving, you're just offering your product. And once you have benefited from that growth, then you can look into further expansion. Again, I understand that. My concern is yeah. that my product is going to be put out into substandard store. It's going to weaken my brand. Okay. Um, I think that's why we do suggest that like, you do carry out due diligence immediately to make sure that the partners you are working with align with your values and beliefs. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could we just go back to your risk analysis? Would that be easy to pull up? Okay, you've identified the shortage of the grain. I mean, we know Haiti is, is the poorest region. Mm -hmm. It's uh, subject to huge problems politically, mm -hmm. etc. And yet we've got a business model with just one product. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge issue with supply chain, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. What was your, um, what, what was some of your analysis in terms of diversification or uh, protection in terms of anything going wrong? Okay. Yeah. So our option or what we recommend for alternatives is that you do begin looking in our other Arabic varieties in Haiti. Although Haiti or is... Always in Haiti. Yeah, although Haiti at the moment is one of the poorest, it is one of the leading producers of coffee in um, in Caribbean, in the Caribbean, and it hasn't been exported by other uh, Canadian companies or other competitors in the market. So by looking further into Haiti, you'll still be offering that premium, unique product, but not just relying on one sole Arabica variety. Any last questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you missed out, you, you, in terms of your uh, market penetration, you missed out a particular age group. What we what we'd like to see that, that we're going to be the brand everybody wants. So why did you miss out 35 to 45 year olds? What do you think? So the storefronts will be primarily for the younger, always in the goal consumers. And then eventually when you do set up your stores within four months, you are targeting that older demographic that likes to sit down and take their time. So we do feel that initially we targeted the mass, who are the younger consumers, and then within four months you begin to cater to that smaller, older demographic. And if I may add to that, those are the initial targets that we feel have a large opportunity, but that is not to say that in the future we will not be looking into the other markets and also be able to tailor to them as well. But at this time we see that when you are starting off, you should have a very specific view of who you are targeting and where the most potential is at this time. Thank you very much.